so forgive us if we repeat things that are on the video, but um, we thought that we would explain a little bit about uh, why we went down the infrared uh, route, um, how we came across Herschel, um, and you know what heating system we had in the first place and why we made the decisions we did. Obviously, you might have some questions. Um, I'm sure you will, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, so sh shall we start with saying, uh, when we bought the house, which was uh, at the end of 2019, uh, we bought, well, we entered a 1950s time warp. As Chris said, we are children of the 50s. So, you know, it felt a little bit like going back to our childhood. Coal fires, we had a solid fuel Rayburn in the kitchen and that heated the hot water. And it was all very charming and lovely, um, but not very practical for today and definitely not future proof. And uh, the cost was enormous to run it with the cost of coal and solid fuel. Actually, if I can just butt in here, the Rayburn was the thing that sold the house to me because I, yeah. I because being a bloke, it's a bit of a gadget. Uh, uh, Catherine sort of said, oh no, a Rayburn, it's going to get really dusty. Uh, but it was great fun having it. And it was fantastic it was. to have that, that, that sort of center of heat in the house and somehow we had to replace it. Yes, Ooh. and it, it was a really big discussion. Of course, um, early the following year, we had planned to uh, refurb the house within a few months. Uh, but of course the uh, pandemic hit. Um, so our builder, uh, that didn't happen in 2020. And in some ways uh, that was a good thing because it gave us longer to think and to investigate what we really wanted to do. Um, what we loved was this constant source of heat and warmth. You, we walked through the front door and uh, you could feel that constant heat from the Rayburn, which we can sort of explain in more detail if you want us to and why we turned those down. But, you know, we looked at putting in um, um, wet systems and Arga well, into the kitchen and all sorts of things. But in the end, uh, we thought, because we had complete carte blanche and we were self-facing, we came back to looking at solar as a source of power. And therefore, we ended up going down the electrical solar route, which is what we have. Um, I don't know whether Chris wants to say a bit more about, uh, would it be interesting to you to know why we didn't go down the air source heat pump um, and why we didn't go down the gas and oil routes. Would that be of interest to explain why? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, okay, well, um, uh, basically, we, did a, we had the opportunity to do a lot of research, actually, on, mm. on this. Um, so um, we're, we're in central Devon, and traditionally, uh, the default has been people going down with oil and gas. In the village we're in, we're not on the grid, on the gas grid, so uh, we would have had to have had a gas tank in the front because the delivery driver has to be able to see the gas tank. Uh, if we had an oil tank, it would have been either in the front or the back. Um, and uh, but of course, the big thing is that um, it's fossil fuel. We all know where we're, we're at with fossil fuels, and uh, you know, trying to get away from uh, the use of those. Um, and it wasn't really a future-proofing way of redoing this house. Um, yes, it would have worked, but we would have had to have installed a wet system. We had no wet system in the house at all, apart from the immersion tank. There was no central heating. We just had night storage heaters. You might remember the good old-fashioned night storage heaters on their night rates, still costing a, a bomb. To have got a wet system in there, to have got uh, the, the boiler in uh, and, and all the all the other stuff. And then the other thing we looked at, of course, was the good old air source heat pump, which is the buzzwords at the moment, I think, everywhere. And um, we looked very seriously at air source heat pumps. We had two or three quotes, but they were hugely expensive to put in uh, and buy at that time, talking about a year ago. I know that things have improved somewhat. I believe that uh, VAT is now not being charged on them. But uh, even so, it's a lot of wads of cash to find up front uh, at the expense, possibly, of some other part of the building refurb that we had to do. 
So, and in fact, it was a, a direct choice between a new roof and an air source heat pump. And uh, the roof, we had to have a roof. Um, the uh, thing about the air source heat pump, the other thing, is everybody said, well, you've got, you, you know, you need to have an air source heat pump. It's going to be paid for by the government with a renewable heat incentive. But we still had to find that money up front. And for us, that just wasn't going to work. So, um, so we ruled out the traditional oil and gas because of it's not being future proofed and the costs involved. Air source heat pump, massive costs involved. Plus, again, we would have been looking at installation of a wet system, uh, underfloor heating, retrofitting. It just wasn't really practical. Could be done, but at a cost. We spoke to our builder because of the um, situation with the floors here. Um, we would have ended up obviously raising the level of the floors because in order to put the wet system in, uh, if, because we wanted to have underfloor heating if we were going to do that. Um, and he said for us, that was incredibly expensive because of other issues to do with the building, um, doorways and all sorts of things. And so we just ruled that out. And, um, and, and then we looked again at solars, which we sort of dismissed in the first place uh, because that was a costly uh, installation as well. But uh, we were recommended to a particular company with that, which obviously is not the subject of today, but they were able to offer us a very good package on the solars. And we've got a big solar installation on the roof, uh, which made it affordable for us, um, rather than having to find a huge amount of money up front. We were comfortable with that. And that meant that we could look again at electrical installation. And I suppose that brings us to um, why, we, why we started to look at infrared. And I'll be really honest with you here. When Chris first mentioned infrared, I actually thought to myself, I, I can't imagine it because my experience was a pub garden infrared heater and I had no idea about what we've ended up with. So I think it was a bit of a revelation. Well, I was only going to say that that um, with the so with the solars, we've ended up with an installation of uh, solar panels uh, producing four point one kilowatt of, um, uh, of of power for us, and we've also installed an eighteen kilowatt battery as well. So the 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 combination of the two means that we have got access made quite a lot of the time to our own electricity, not having to go to the grid. Uh, also, in addition to that. Uh, we are with Octopus Go as our uh, energy provider, as I'm sure many will, will uh, know about the uh, Octopus. A very, it's very good for us at the moment anyway. Uh, we're on a contract which ends in the end of September. But at the moment, five pence a night for four hours means that we can charge up the battery if there haven't been solars during the day, uh, cheaply at night. So in the mornings, we're in a situation where we can choose how to use our electricity to either heat up the water tank uh, or possibly to switch on the panels or both. Uh, and it's, it's costing, it, the, the costs are minimal. Uh, and actually it might be worth just mentioning, uh, we did some uh, comparative costs the other day in relation to how our costs before all this and since. Before this all happened, we were spending around about 200 pounds a month on fuel solid fuel uh, uh, and logs because we had an open fire uh, and also uh, electricity. Uh, since then, we're, we're, it looks like it's averaging out at about 90, 90-ish. Mm. Uh, last month, our electricity bill was 25 pounds. But, then, but uh, we're, we've averaged it because we've done a winter here. So we've been able to make that comparison. Mm. And obviously we know that prices, the, the prices we're paying now are higher um, than they were when we started here. I mean, the price of everything has gone up. So um, for us, we, we felt that that was um, the right way to go. Yeah, really. and it's worth just saying for, for us, this is this is representing a massive saving. It might be different for yourselves in, in your situation, but for us, the savings on this older house have been massive. And in addition to that, I mean, I wish that I could actually show the individual savings that the, um, infrared panels uh, offering us, I'm fairly convinced that they, they are a significant part of the saving because what we found in the winter uh, was that they weren't on all the time, far from it. I mean, they get the room heated up uh, and, um, and that's it, then they'd be off. Um, 
so you know, I, 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 I can't unfortunately dr drill down to the individual cost of the, the actual panels. I haven't been able to do that, but I, 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 I'm convinced that they, they, rep they are representing part of the saving. The other thing that actually also need to mention, and I'm sure you're all aware of this, is the importance of insulation. It's, it's absolutely paramount with any sea heating system. And so we, we had our house insulated for free under a government scheme, great, because um, we had empty cavity walls here and it's made a massive difference. Yeah. So, um, and we had to put new windows in. I mean, mm. you could, uh, so we're just giving you the picture of a house that just needed complete refurbishment. So you may not be in that situation. We completely understand we're all in different places. Um, I think it's important, obviously, whatever you put in, you've got to get your windows sorted and you've got to get your insulation sorted mm. in order to get the most efficient system. Um, going back to something I said at the beginning, um, just before we talk about Herschel themselves and, and um, how we came across these particular infrareds, we said about the lovely warmth in the house, um, which we loved with the Rayburn, and you could open the front door and it did feel really welcoming and warm. And any of you who've had that experience, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And that is exactly what we have, because although it's all very modern and, and doesn't look at all like um, a, an old fashioned house anymore, um, we've still got that ambient heat as we come in. And last winter, we kept the heaters at about 18 degrees. Mm -hmm. You keep the mass of the house just ticking over, which is the most efficient way of using them. But we, well, I work full time um, and Chris is almost full time. And so when we come home, um, the house is at that lovely sort of gentle warmth. And then you can boost it if you want to. But you don't come home to a cold house. If you've been away, um, you have the same thing. You can just keep it <coughs> about... Um, 16, 17 degrees. Um, we've got smart apps so we can um, sort it all out, you know, a couple of hours before we come home if we want to and give it a boost. So it's very easy to use if you've got a really busy lifestyle as well and you get that lovely welcoming warmth. Catherine, yeah. what, what I might do, Chris, if that's okay, I just might open it up for a few questions from people. Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Want to ask Chris and Catherine anything about their experience? And please go ahead. So, what do you mean? Uh, Lynn. Lynn, um, yeah. Thanks very much. I did watch the video, so um, is it, but okay. it's really good to hear again. This is sort of my job to get things. Um, I've just bought a 1955 um, Black House semi, and it's a complete refurb. So, it's got a aisle and wood um, ray. Uh, so I'm, I'm exactly in the same position as you are, which is a smaller house. I'm interested in how you um, combined the PV panels with the battery and the immersion heater. And did, what, what did you do first? Because I obviously I'm going to do the whole thing, and I'm not sure where to start um, sure with the electrician or the PV panels or. or... Well, um, that's that's yeah, that's an interesting. I mean, the thing was that we basically did everything at once, didn't we? Well, we did put the solar. We put in. the solars in first, um, so that that installation went in. But we, because of the nature of the refurb, we actually moved out of the house for best part of six months, didn't we? Yeah. Stayed at. Um, Stayed with my mum. Yeah. Yeah. Chris loved it. Yeah, it was, it was okay. It was okay. It was okay. No, I won't give mother-in-law jokes. Don't worry. There's no need. Um, but um, uh, so we moved out. So everything was done at once. Uh, so, again, uh, sort of thanks to the pandemic in a funny sort of way, um, it did mean that we were able to do some pretty thorough uh, um, what's it, investigations. Um, uh, you know, hence we've ended up with the systems that we have done. Um, I think I think you'd have to start if you you'd have to start if you were going down the solar route, for example, hmm. you'd have to start with that because that's your source of heat. Really, but I don't. I don't know. It's not essential because you could have the installations, um, and if you put your infrareds in, that's the beauty of them. Really, they're not disruptive. If you are, I mean, so difficult. We needed the whole house had to be rewired, and so that meant new lighting. If you're in that situation, then you're getting all your wiring put into your ceilings at the same time as all your lighting um, is going. So your joists are up and your ceilings are down. And that was our situation. But if you weren't quite as dramatic as that, then you could just put your um, 
panels onto your ceilings and connect that up to your existing uh, electrical source. And then later on, if you wanted to put solars in, for example, as your source of power, then you could do that. So that's the beauty of them, really. They, the installation is so simple. Our electrician said it is just like connecting um, a, a light fitting. It's really easy once you know what you're doing. And, and he, he was very hesitant to start with because he'd never done it before. So um, I think, does that answer your question? Thanks very much. I've got a portion of it. There's SMS just in the ceiling, so I haven't got to have everything down. So I might as well just do it all in one go. And just, just doing it all in one go has certainly been our experience, and we're glad we did it all in one go. Otherwise, it's going to drag on. Yeah, but some, yeah. but sometimes you can only afford to do one bit at a time. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Another question, Dan. Yeah. So, did you fit all the panels to the ceiling, or did you? Go for some wall mounted as well. We've got we've got one in the front room um, uh, on on the on the fire uh, chimney breast actually, and it's a mirror. It's like the, the mirror which is behind Matt. It's very uh, or it's identical really, uh, and um, so that's it. But otherwise, all of the other ones, including the one in the garden room, actually we've got a wooden garden room as well, uh, which um, is um, insulated in the way that these rooms are on the ceiling. So everything on the ceiling, and um, well, they just work, don't they? And I think from an aesthetic point of view, this is where I was saying I was a little bit dubious. But once we had seen um, Chris had come to visit and we looked at pictures of what it looked like, we were happy to, to go with that. Loads of our friends um, were saying, well, what's that going to look like? Aren't you going to feel it's really oppressive in your room? What's that going to look like? And since they visited, they, they just can't get over it because it gives you so much freedom with where your mm. furniture can go. It's made our house feel a lot bigger because mm. we were not constrained by radiators on walls. Um, and it doesn't, you don't have a hot head and you don't end up feeling um, that, that it's crowding, crowding you at mm. all. I mean, they just disappear. You don't even see them, actually. People come in and they say, well, where is your heating system? They're looking around and we have to show them. What it is, and as for the mirror, they just think that's amazing. Mm. But the, the key thing, because your ceilings are not that high, are they? I mean, no. they're two point two to two point two. Two point two, yeah, two point two, yeah. So actually, but the comfort is still, yeah, still, yeah. You're managing it with those service stats, and there's mm. no issue with it from that high. No. So, yeah. Yes, it's not like we've got a big lofty house. I mean, it's just a straightforward 1950s semi. It's not got huge high ceilings. Um, so, but I mean, obviously, you can you can put them wherever you like. Mm. Um, the mirror thing works really well in the sitting room um, because that is a smaller room, um, and we and we just love the idea of <coughs> we wanted a mirror anyway over the fireplace, so um, it just made sense. The, the other the other one that's worth just mentioning just um, is that we were in our utility room, which is not insulated at all. Um, we put in uh, an aspect. 1900 watts yeah and so um that's more like a traditional like pup heater although it doesn't glow but it's when you're in that room this uninsulated room in the winter and you put that thing on it's brilliant it it really works extremely well so although it's cold in there suddenly after about 10 minutes you think mm. actually this is okay it works yeah. for that space that was a it was mm. a different solution um we we couldn't afford to do everything we wanted to do to our utility room. It was just one step too far mm. with building costs going up so much during the pandemic. So we've parked that part of the house and we've made it nice. It's useful. And in about five years time, we will rebuild that end of the house and fully insulate it and probably put an infrared on the ceiling at that point. But at the moment, that is um, how we've managed that. Mm. And it's a really good solution. Mm. Any more questions, Matt? Whether the mirror panels were less efficient, but no, 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 no. Well, no, I'll tell you what, no, but the, no, the thing about our front room, okay, is that we haven't gone completely green in this house. I'm afraid naughtily, <laughs> we've got a gas hob behind us. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there, uh, running on a couple of LPG tanks outside. Just small ones. Just small ones, because um, we like cooking on gas. 
But the second one, in the front room, we've also got a uh, wood burner from a company called Woodworm, uh, who are based in Devon, and it's a highly efficient piece of kit, one of the most efficient wood, wood burners you can get. So although it's not completely green, it's as green as you can go. So we don't actually have to put those panels on very often, but when we have put them on, they are brilliant, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are absolutely brilliant. That mirror thing is amazing, amazing. We don't need, we don't really, if we're honest, we don't really need no. the wood burner, but we, just like to have we, a real we just couldn't quite cope without having a focal point in our sitting room. Mm. I'm really sorry, it's just our, just our aesthetic on that. <laughs> it does, it, it's great. The, the <laughs> panels in the room, we've got one 600 watts in, just in front of the bay window, and then we've got, I think it's a 700 watt mirror. And, 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 fireplace, yeah. and, and they together, they work fantastically well. So again, mm. when we're working, we don't need to come home and light a fire. We, you know, it's, we don't actually need the fire yeah. at all, if we're honest. So you've caught us out on that one. <laughs> but that was just our choice. Um, so do you want us to say a bit about um, how, do you want, well, do you want to say anything else about how we, Came across you, um, Matt, and not you personally. Yes, sure. yeah, say a little bit. So, I mean, we volunteered to do this because we were so impressed with the product, and we said we'd like to um, support uh, anybody else wanting investigating it because I think what we found really hard. Um, probably we had a bit too much time to think with the pandemic um, and our builder having to put us off um, for so long, um, was that it, we, we just had this opportunity to sort of think about different companies. And um, we we started going down the infrared route. And then, I mean, you discovered Herschel. And um, from the very get-go, it was a very um, clear understanding of what the product was, what we could have. And they answered our questions for us and gave us confidence. Um, because we had a building company and an electrician who were new to it, they were trying, I mean, they, they just, they just, oh, we don't really know what you're talking about. Um, they were offered support from Herschel um, with installation and uh, any, anything technical that they wanted to ask, that was always available. And so I don't know if, I, if you want to add anything to that, Chris, but... Um, that was really well. I'll tell you what I, what I will add to this is when I, when we started looking into all of this, and we were looking, as I said earlier, looking down the traditional route, and I did come across infrareds. Uh, and I have to say, I rather put them to one side as a bit of a gimmick, actually, because I thought, well, no, I can't really believe this is for real. When I came I came back to it, I thought, I think I need to revisit the infrared situation. And, and I did, and I looked into it in a lot more detail, I looked at the science of it. I'm not a scientist, but I thought, you know, it's interesting to read about that side of it. Came up to Bristol, met Matt. We had a discussion. He demonstrated, as you've got in, that, in the room there, all the, 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 the panels. And I thought, this is the real deal. And there was no doubt in my mind that as soon as I'd seen it, that this is the route that we need to go down. And um, that, so I'm so glad that uh, I came back to Herschel and uh, came back to Infrared because actually the fact of the matter is they work. It's as simple as that. Mm, yeah. And Herschel have been really supportive, both of us and also of uh, our electrician installer. And um, so, um, you know, we're just... Um, they, they, they won't tell you this, but our experience independently as customers has been nothing but positive. Um, and I think... Also, we were having a conversation trying to anticipate some of the questions you might ask if we were you um, about 12 months ago, two years ago. Um, one of the things we were trying to think about was weighing up the pros and cons of different systems. And it's, it's easy, uh, the position we were in, um, to say why we didn't want to go down the fossil fuel route in the future. We could see that any investment that we did with that, we would have to change again. We didn't want to do that. Um, and the air source heat pump, we've talked about, that was a big cost at the beginning, which we couldn't actually find, and we needed a financial solution for that. Um, and then we talked all about the inconvenience of putting in a wet system in a house that didn't have that. Um, and then we started talking about the cons of having an infrared system, you know, sort of playing devil's advocate, thinking, what is it that 
it doesn't work about this. And I'll be honest with you, I can't think of anything. I am really mm. happy with it. It's a clean, modern source of heat. It keeps the house at a steady temperature. Because we've got the insulation as good as we can make it, it therefore is very efficient. It's comfortable. It looks modern. Our children are dead impressed because suddenly, you know, mum and dad have moved themselves into the 21st century, which, you know, they've been quite impressed with. And um, and it's just it's just made the house. In fact, one of the builders um, said uh, as they finished, they took photos of this as a project. And uh, he actually said to his boss, he said, this house is like a modern house now a new build inside an old skin and that is the aesthetic that we've managed to get and so you know they've gone away really impressed with new ideas for some of their customers now and so I'm not just saying this we're not being paid to say this or anything like that it's just an honest opinion we, we are just so happy with it I can't think of any reason why we shouldn't and mm. you know not that we've had this happen but if if anything happened it's just a question of taking a panel off and then having a new one connected. It's not like mm. you've got disruption with floors having to come up if you've got a pipe that goes. Well, it's, it's, it's worth just that. saying, um, yeah. just, just briefly, we, we haven't put a boiler into this house. We've got a, a, only a hot water tank. We've got these uh, panels on the top here. We've got the panels on the roof. Now, as far as the infrared's concerned, there's no maintenance. It makes us feel much more comfortable yeah. in so many ways. So. Yeah. I think we've sort of covered everything we can think of, but if you have any more questions, we're really happy to help. I think we might draw it to a close there. I think unless there's anybody else that'd like to ask anything, but thank you very much both of you for your time. We really appreciate it. And um, yeah, really interesting to get your feedback and usually informative for prospective customers. So that's, that's really, really great. And thank you again.